join us today, and then I will get into the rest of the news I haven't hit yet towards the end of this hour. I, I never even aired the uh, this week on ABC yesterday where they claimed I wouldn't show up to debate them live when they said that they weren't going to do the interview, basically, and then came to pick me up 12 minutes before it was airtime so they could claim I was a coward. Just all sorts of weaselly behavior out of government-run media. But Dr. Steve Pachinik, of course, ran the famous Camp David Accords as the psychological expert there. He wrote the manual on psychological warfare for the State Department, helped found the Delta Force with General Boykin and others, uh, and of course, been a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, co-wrote a bunch of books with Tom Clancy, produced Hollywood films. And he was the guy who came on in early 2002 to say that bin Laden death was a hoax. And that he'd already, uh, you know, but you know, basically uh, died. That he wasn't alive. And they'd roll him out later. Then Walter Cronkite came out and said it. Madeleine Albright, Secretary of State, said it. Uh, and then they rolled him out, and it was all fake. Well, now Cy Hirsch came out two years ago and said it's a hundred percent lie. I have an article coming out. Well, they came after him. He shut up for a while. He talked some to our office. Now he's saying, well, it's just fake that they didn't have a firefight. Only one guy was killed. Well, that's what we were told. A double. Uh, of bin Laden, and then it was a military safe house. That's why it was a half mile from the main military headquarters of the whole country. Uh, the Navy still started figuring that out, so they blew up their helicopter a few months later on a shut-up mission. I've since then talked to family members of the Navy SEALs, and I've talked to some of the Navy SEALs. The videos are up on Infowars.com. Within a day of the hoax, I said it was a hoax, and then within a few months of the event, we pointed out that they basically had killed the Navy SEALs. Uh, and joining us is Dr. Pachinik. we got three minutes to break. We'll come back with ten minutes after that, sir. Appreciate your time. But what do you make of Cy Hirsch now and all this coming out uh, at this point with the bin Laden hoax? Well, I, I, uh, I've known about Cy Hirsch. We come from the opposite sides of the ideological spectrum, but he's very well-versed in intelligence, and he is very accurate. There was no raid. There basically was... No stand, the stand down was, as we said, at Cheney, Bush, Rumsfeld, and basically this is a CIA operation. It was run by the CIA and implemented by the CIA, started by Tennant, John Brennan, and what we have is a real problem of credibility in our military, in our political leadership, and in our intelligence leadership. And what this brings out is like the Milai massacre, the cover-up is major. It goes from Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, it goes to uh, Bush, uh, to Bush Jr., Cheney, Rumsfeld, and Obama. And basically it puts into place uh, Admiral McRaven, who was in charge of the Special Forces, or the SEAL team who claimed all this nonsense about how well they performed, and then puts into play Admiral Mullen, who was also a liar. I said it from day one they were liars. I said they were ineffectual. I said the SEAL teams were blown out of proportion. It was a publicity stunt. And now more than ever, Cy Hirsch has made it very clear. Now, I and Cy Hirsch have not agreed, and I've had a confrontation with him in an intelligence meeting. So for him to come out on our side to basically say the government's lying again and again, this is the key point for your listeners to understand. We have a government that is not legitimate. Obama has lied repeatedly. From the beginning till now, he has lied. Our military has lied. Our intelligence has lied. So we have candidates who are coming in, like uh, Hillary Clinton, who also lied. She was part of this. She was a senator. Well, Dr. Stay there. I'm going to come back to Dr. Stephen Channing after this quick break to break down. What does it signify, though, that CNN's top headline would be this and that Cy Hirsch is coming out with the truth now or a limited hangout? What does that say is happening inside the power structure? Stay with us. We're live. And I said, well, I'm not doing it taped. They didn't respond back and sent a car 12 minutes to airtime. Just the stunts they play now to try to win points. And everybody knows I go on live shows. I'm going to tear these people apart. I want to ask Dr. Pachinik his take on Jade Helm and all the drills the government's got him doing for civil disturbance and where he thinks it's all going, what they're gearing up for. Dr. Pachinik's talked about the states being the answer to getting control of the federal government. Well, yeah, and they're preparing and training the military to try to take on the states. People say, well, that'll never happen. Well, with the criminals we've got running things, it certainly might. And they're really worried about Texas. So we'll get Dr. Pachinik's take on that briefly here in a moment as well. But if you go to Infowars.com, 
You'll see flashback, proof bin Laden death, another government lie, InfoWars report, uh, four years before Hirsch revelations. And then we break down uh, the day after it happened in an eight-minute video that it's a hoax. Uh, that was uh, May 2nd, 2011. And then proof bin Laden uh, death, another government lie. We've got interviews with Pachenik in there. We've got interviews with uh, the family of some of the dead seals, multiple families. And we've got more current breakdowns of this. But I want to explain something to people. We've broken hundreds of secret documents here and hundreds of others that are restricted. And it's very dangerous to do that in this climate. Um, you know, if we meet with a Navy SEAL, and I talk about it on air, you better believe we did. Or if we meet with a family of a Navy SEAL who died, that's what I did a couple days after the helicopter blew up and they got rid of them, a few months after the fake killing. And the families, and what the SEALs believe is that it was a body double they were there to take out. There wasn't a big firefight outside. The other helicopter just blew up. It was a half mile or less from the, from the main military base of the whole country, their headquarters and their main academy. And so we never knew exactly what happened, but people on the ship said there was no burial at sea, so they cart-marshaled over 100 people. And it's just been one big cover-up. They lied about the Situation Room photo. Dr. Pachenik, you've got a lot of amazing sources. I know you've been visited by the CIA and MI6 and threatened. I've been threatened. Um, and then they had the Stratford leak that they were tasked with trying to, you know, make us look bad. Uh, I mean, I didn't ask to be at the level of this whole game. All I want is my country back. But now I'm being attacked by up to 300 to 500 newspapers a day saying lies. Uh, I mean, on a Richter scale, previous attacks were a two or three. This is a 10. Um, what is going on? Why do you think they're targeting us? Is it getting ready to destroy me or building me up to be politically discredited with, with straw men? And then I want to go back into bin Laden. But I want to be a little selfish today and ask you from your perspective and your sources what is going on. Because they're running around like chickens with their heads cut off about this show. And quite frankly, I don't like being that prominent. I mean, we, th this is a multi-magnitudes more effect. But, but I think I know my own answer and I want your take on this. Congress is listening. The military is listening. Not that I'm special, but I have all these amazing guests on, people like you. And this show is a lot closer to reality than almost anything else out there. So this has become like the forbidden fruit channel or something uh, where it's just gotten really hot and it shows the insanity of the official narrative. And so they're trying to discredit me right now with Pentagon directed bull and CIA directed bull. Where is this going? Well, Alex, number one, let me, let me assure you that nobody wants to take you out. The reason for that is very simple. Uh, they do not want to make you a martyr. That, that does not serve anybody's purpose. Number two, the reason you're exceedingly important, even to the intelligence community, to me, is remember, you were the only man who stood up 13 years ago when we had the 9-11 and said, and allowed me to say this was a false flag and a stand down. It was 14, now, Steve, 14. 14 years ago. So you have to remember, a prophet in his own country is never appreciated. You will never be appreciated in this country because you tell the truth. And no one in the republic who runs the republic can tolerate it. However, you have amassed a huge audience in the millions, which to many in the, in the senior leadership is very threatening. And the reason is very simple. In the beginning, they could co-opt you as crazy or me as crazy and call us a very simple term conspiracy. However, fortunately, your audience and the American audience is too smart, far too smart, to buy any of the narratives that were sold by Clinton, the Bushes, or by the CIA, or the military. And eventually what happened in the age of the Internet, you were able to take that narrative without deviating an ounce, without backing off, but having sponsors and having someone like me say, keep going, Alex, you're brave, don't worry about it. They will not attack you. They well, I mean, they, I mean, I've been attacked with propaganda and other things by different camps. I know it's not one monolithic system. It's just, to be 41 years old and to have no exaggeration, one day last week, 500 news articles and uh, you know, lying about me, 
what nerve have we hit? Is it they think we're weak so they're going in, or they think we're strong? Because, I mean, I can handle a lot of pressure, Doc, but this is starting to get like the twilight zone. Well, the point is, that is a sense of recognition and admiration. Remember, you're being lauded by the fact that they feel you're a threat to them by continuously cutting into their vulnerable point. It's a badge of honor, and the audience understands that people all over the world listen to you, and this a republic can no longer stand the way it is. It's falling apart. Well, I just want Do the establishment to understand this, and I say this selfishly for myself and my own family. Uh, people get this stuff now. I'm not the only one talking about this. There's thousands of other prominent people that get the paradigm now. So doing something to me is not going to do anything. Uh, all I'm, except turn me into a martyr. I, but the thing is, I don't hate the government. I don't even hate these special interests. These people are almost blind, Dr. Pachinik, in my view, in that they don't look at what their actions are going to do 10, 15 steps down the road. They, they're destroying the empire itself. They're destroying the country. They are, they are going after the press. They're going after our industry. Uh, they're just doing crazy stuff, and I just don't see it. I don't see this elite being able to continue on. That's all I'm saying. And all I want is prosperity and stability, doctor. Let, let me pull back a little bit and explain something to you. We are not a monolithic entity. I've said that before. But your ability to penetrate through and hit at the nerve spot allows different elements of the government, I won't identify which intelligence communities or which elements, to allow them to push back. Now, I'll give you an example. Why was this story by Seymour Hersh released now more than ever? Nobody's asking that question except you. And the answer is, my suspicion is, it's only my suspicion, I'm not going to conspiracy, is that it's elements within our own government who have very close relationships with Seymour Hersh and know him exceedingly well because Seymour has been in meetings with me with the intelligence community, and he knows he gets information from it. And it's the, I won't identify which units. It's a way of paying back Obama, Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton to get them out of the race. It's the way the industry, the intelligence system, and the military system works indirectly in order to punish those political leaders and dynasties which think that they can run the republic namely the Clintons, who were involved in 9-11, sure. let me finish, and the Bushes, Neil, Marvin, Jeb, and the old man, including Bush Jr., because they have destroyed the republic. Now it's time for the military and intelligence units that are loyal to the republic to punish this administration for what they did in Benghazi, for having demoted Petraeus, for having demoted 12 of our Navy commission, uh, admiral, uh, Navy men, for having demoted AFRICOM generals, and this is their way to tell Obama, you're no longer in charge. And by the way, Hillary, you will not get elected, nor will you, Jeb Bush. And that's my uh, point of view, which I think is well grounded in terms of knowing Seymour Hersh, knowing when he covers up, and knowing where he gets the intelligence. So what I'm saying to you and the public is, we have our own ways in the Republic to punish those who've punished the people. And you have to have faith that you have, you, Alex, and the audience have had an impact on many elements of our society which you don't know about. And, and some of them I don't know about, but there are many who I work with and can criticize because this country allows you to criticize as long as you serve it. That was and my next even, point. That's my next point. Then I want your take on this, then we'll go back to the Bin Laden situation. Sure. We'll have you back for a full hour soon if you can do it. StevePachinik.com, best-selling author, joins us right now, a former spy chief, basically, uh, with the State Department. If you pull back from all this, I totally agree with you. I know there's really good camps of people in the Army, in the Navy, in the Marines, uh, across the board. They hate what's happening. I know two years ago, General Dempsey, uh, on that Saturday night, went to the White House and said, the military's not going to back an attack to, to topple Saad to put al-Qaeda in charge. It just, we're not doing it. So there is, just like Eisenhower warned of the military-industrial complex, he meant the special interest manipulating it. People always ask, and say, well, tyranny couldn't come, our military wouldn't put up with it. Well, that's actually true. Our military has been saying no over and over again. That's why these bureaucrats are so angry with it, is that it's not perfect, but compared to them, it's, 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 it's you know, a whole different world. And you're right. 
I know for a fact when the FBI or the Justice Department uh, subgroups uh, or state police or federal marshals give us documents that turn out to be accurate every time that burns the police state, it's because they don't like it. And there is a war going on from every different angle between different stratas. And it is good versus evil. And I, I mean, I agree with you. All this stuff coming out on Hillary and how she lied about getting shot at in, in uh, Serbia is 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 the the inside system saying no to these dynasties and trying to reform things so in this fight i understand where he uses a conduit because i'm the only person at least in the past crazy enough to stick my neck out and do this stuff to go forward in the future so what does that signify and how is the fight from your sources going internally for the future of the republic well i i'm more optimistic about the future republic number one without without you know, caressing you or, or lauding you. You and I know we've gone back a long ways when you were very young and very courageous and you were able to state exactly what I said and we made the prediction that 14 years from now, after 9-11, some president is going to claim he killed Osama bin Laden, which we knew was nonsense. Secondly, you have to remember, when I walk around and see different people, some people may recognize me, but you know the first thing they ask me about? It's not Tom Clancy, my partner. It's about Alex Jones. And I said, well, how did you know who I am? He said, well, I heard you on Alex Jones. You are everywhere. I go to Europe. You're everywhere. In the Middle East, you're everywhere. So your voice is not just the voice of Alex Jones. It's the voice of truth and a prophet that within his own country has made an impact. Now, let me tell you, the intelligence community is a very rich and wonderful community. It's filled with individuals who feel very strongly about our country. But they can't come out in public and say what they want to, and especially in the military. I can't tell you how important General Martin Dempsey has been to our country in terms of restraining the wars, in terms of focusing, in terms of running our military in a time of uncertainty. Next question, who's this new guy? I don't really know him. I, I can't say anything. He's a commandant of the Marine Corps. I'm a great admirer of the Marine Corps. It's improved over the years. They've become very effective in what we call the human topography. In other words, they've learned about psychology and anthropology. But I really can't comment about any of that. I think it's important that we rotate through the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But there are people who have not worked with us, and that is what you're seeing now. I think Benghazi and I think what happened to Petraeus had a major, major impact on military and intelligence community, and especially a White House that was not very effective or very developed as in the Obama administration. They specifically do not want Jeb Bush anymore. They're tired of Bush. Bush is a liar. He worked with his brother. They're tired of Hillary Clinton. It's more than just her lies. It's the corruption that she's had with Russia, uranium, and with Bill Clinton constantly lying, constantly degrading the republic. And our military and intelligence units will not tolerate Sure. That. Well, we know the Clintons have been blackmailing with all the files they've got. But you can see that the that people in the system are sick of them. Correct. But, Alex, you cannot... I know it's hard for you, and I understand it very well. That's why I often volunteer to kind of give you and say to the audience, look, take a break, but you have to keep going on. This race is not a short-distance race, and you've done a formidable job over 14 years, but there's going to be more years to come because whatever we're going to elect, and hopefully it will be the Scott Walkers, the Rand Pauls, the people from the Midwest, the young Christians who come out of something that doesn't have any kind of uh, tainted background and can begin to understand what our country needs. And it needs leadership. It needs to consolidate. It needs sure. to close down our government units. But you're the voice, and that voice well, is going to attract a lot of dissident behavior, and that's okay. Well, I'll tell you what it comes down to. I mean, take this military drill. It's just more conditioning, more of an attempt, because I think the country's going to collapse to get ready for that. We never said Jade Helm would be the takeover, but everybody from the governor of Texas to, to Senator Cruz, to Senator Paul, uh, to Congressman Louie Gohmert, to Chuck Norris, who came out and said, I love our military, but I don't trust who's running it. Well, you know, Chuck Norris has got incredible military sources. The special forces love him. He hangs out with them all over the world. And I'm not going to say what I've been told and things. We're going to have some news tomorrow on that subject. But it's not just me. I'm just one little iceberg sticking up. Under the surface, what you just said, 
the military is so awake and knows what's going on. That's why the political elite, these globalists, better get their act together. Because what they've got planned for this country, uh, taking it over, setting up a police state, the dog's not going to hunt, Doc. Well, let me tell you one thing. Number one, the police state can no longer exist, and it can't, it, it's not viable, and I'll tell you why. I live in the South. It is very hard for any policeman on a national level to be able to infiltrate any particular area of the South because it's very fragmented and it has its loyalty to the local community. I can't emphasize enough how important it is for your listeners to work at the local level with the local police, with the local mayors, the local commissioners. They are far more powerful than the President of the United States, than the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. We have military uh, officers who work at the local level. I've got a military officer who works in my area, and at the same time as a commissioner. He's not taking over the government. He's learning how to run, run a civilian government while at the same time being able to service his country, what we call the patriot. That's what happened in 1776, and that's what I'm beginning to see all over the country. What we need are leaders who have served in our country, who understand where we have to go. You know, you just said it. Stay there. Do the final segment with us because that's it. I should just leave Jade Helm alone and let them practice taking over local government because most of the military is already on our side. Correct. And so as they put them in local government, it just means our people are already everywhere. That's what the Barack Obamas don't get, is they're literally setting up their own downfall. We'll be back. Stay with us. Uh, to, to have you know, the media misrepresenting what you say, what you stand for, what you do, trying to discredit you because they're so scared of what you're talking about. Uh, and, I mean, they should be scared. We were the first to have Navy SEAL families on who lost their sons saying that bin Laden raid was fake. Because it was. And I got death threats over that. Very specific ones. Uh, and I'm not really scared. It's just at the same time, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm trying to help everybody. I mean, this country is going over the edge here. Somebody's got to restrain the out-of-control bureaucrats and corporate interests that sit overseas half the time and aren't really looking at what they're doing and don't understand how they're eroding America's real power. That's my view on it. And Dr. Pachinik finishing up uh, on the whole climate in this country, Jade Helm, 10-state operation. Clearly, it's mastering the human domain. It's practicing how to take over locally for civil unrest and, and, and this new enemy, the Tea Party or whatever. But the good news is that's only woken the military up. But, but I think the system should look at all these small towns, people coming out of the woodwork saying no in a traditionally pro-military state like Texas. It's not anti-military. We understand the mission uh, is an overall corrupt mission. Uh, I'm not against people who are vets running for office. I think that's great. But I'm talking about the fact that not just the military rejecting where Obama wants them to go, but the people understand that the military is being used uh, for unconstitutional duties and that the feds are very scared uh, of the states' rights movement. Dr. Pachinik, your take on that. Well, you're absolutely right. What I begin to see more and more is that more young people are joining the National Guard and are getting involved in the local communities at a very young age, at the 20s, 30s. I even met a young woman who is 23 years old in the state legislature here in Florida, and it's very impressive. So you have grassroots that are coming out from very different groups, whether it's the Christian Missionaries of America, a religious group or political group, and or the Tea Party. And that is is the essence of our democracy. So I'm not as worried about the police state coming down and our soldiers shooting in America. They're not going to do that. It's I don't think that's going to happen either. The point is the political class is trying to, trying to sell that mission. Well, the problem is, first of all, remember, you, you have aggrandized your audience to the end of the millions. You look at Anderson Cooper, an ex-CIA operative who works, you know, on the weekend. He has less than a million people. You look at MSNBC, they're dead. You look at Fox, it's basically nothing more than Roger Ailes allowing himself to make more money. And I know Roger, I like him. But nobody takes it seriously. So the reality is, it's you and what the people find on the internet and are able to cross uh, across uh, 
you know, hatch. Well, take Drudge. I mean, why does the Pentagon and Congress obsess over Drudge all day? I mean, it well, really shows uh, that the system's a paper tiger. Well, yeah, that's true. But on the other hand, you have General Dempsey, whose real concerns is how many guys can I send into Djibouti? How many guys can I send into Iraq? How many special forces can I send into, uh, you know, anywhere near Iraq, into Jordan to protect them? I mean, we have serious problems that are being addressed in a serious way, where most of the time they're being asked about sexual harassment in the military by That's senators. That's another but question. Do five more minutes. Uh, 60 second break, stevepachinik.com. Steve Chenix, our guest. I want to ask you when we come back in overdrive, some stations don't carry it, infowars.com forward slash show. What is the elite doing harassing the military structure at every level? If I was a foreign enemy, this is how I would have wrote it with all the political correctness training, all of it. And what's going on with ISIS uh, from the information you have? Final segment straight ahead, infowars.com. You understand, selfishly, I'm going to ask some of my own questions here, but you heard the questions I asked as we were going to break. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, go ahead. Uh, the basic bottom line is that uh, the, the congressmen and senators, particularly the senator from New York, their attempt, whether it's willingly or unwillingly, is to uh, degrade our capability in the military. Civilians feel very threatened by the strength of our military. They always have, but our military is much stronger, a lot smarter than these congressmen and senators. Many of our generals have PhDs, masters. I mean, Keith Alexander had four masters. General Petraeus had a PhD. So these senators are very low in terms of the intellectual gravitas, where you have commanders who are literally in action. And I warn our commanders that if they continue to appear before Congress and Senate and go over this nonsensical issue of sexual harassment, where now our own soldiers have to wear high heel shoes in order to feel what it feels like to be a woman, that's degrading. But it's really... By the way, if you're a new listener, they made them wear ruby red slippers. Correct. I mean, I mean this, is, this is just mental illness. Well, it's not only mental illness. It, there should be defiance within the rank and just throw out the uh, generals or female generals or male generals who insist on it. This is inappropriate. It's a command and control issue. It's not acceptable. The second thing is where the CIA, a civilian unit, has created troubles, like in ISIS, like Iraq, with Bush Jr. and Cheney, where they were not able to complete their own task, where it was an inappropriate task to attack Iraq. Iraq was created, ISIS was created from generals who escaped, thanks to Jerry Bremer, who was an inept individual, part of Opus Dei, a man who was never qualified for this, and de demilitarized the Iraqi army. Now they have the unit of the Iraqi army, which attracted Sunnis, and that in turn, our military has to go in and clean out what the CIA made a mistake. That is a history that has gone on for 30 years. I've worked with both the CIA and our military intelligence. For the most part, our CIA has left the legacy of ashes, as Eisenhower has repeated, and the military's had to clean it up, be it Vietnam, be it ISIS, be it Iraq, Yemen, Somalia. And so now we have an internal fight that goes between the civilians and the military. It will go on for quite a while, but we can no longer have And the people. civilians are going to put the military in roles to make them the bad guys, just Correct. like they're going to put cops in the roles to make them the bad guys. Correct. You've got to be sophisticated enough to see that it's these different agencies that want to discredit what they see as the old, original American institutions, the military and local governments. Well, I'll give you an example. I mean, the prosecutor, the African-American woman, Prosecutor Mosby at Baltimore, who said that we're going to find justice. I mean, she was, she, she was absurd because I happen to know the difference between a switchblade and a regular knife, and I happen to have had properties in Baltimore 30 years ago, and I had to give them up because Baltimore was the same problem 30 years ago that it has now. So it has not improved. It's not a matter of justice. It's a matter of competency. She also was yeah. going on stage with Prince promising to persecute the police. And I'm not defending the police state, but I mean, you don't have prosecutors like a rock star because she's prosecuting Correct. someone. That's crazy. Correct. And Preds is totally inappropriate. It's the issue of African-American versus white is not appropriate. Obama should have cut this off quickly. I think we have an attorney general who's quite good, Lynch, who will not get into this problem, and we can solve it. I think we have an FBI director, Comey, who defied uh, Bush Jr. before, and I think that's sure. going well. And we have a general who's defied the president's orders. So we have people who are really Americans who defy what the orders are, but
but do it quietly and then retaliate through guys like Seymour Hersh. And that's definitely a retaliation against the Clinton. Why are, in closing, we only got 45 seconds. Why are they making such a big deal out of Jade Helm? I mean, we just mentioned it as an aside, and they're like chickens with their heads cut off. What, what's going on? I have no idea. They, they just pick a particular individual for Jade Helm. But the truth is, the far greater story is the story of our economy as it moves forward and, and China and Europe and Russia are going down. So that's Sure, really sure. I talked to the governor's chief of staff today and he said, look, we're just ignoring Jade Helm and trying to go ahead with the economy. You just go ahead with the economy. And that's what your people have to understand. And keep on doing the great work. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Pachinik, for your uh, perspective. StevePachinik.com, Alex Jones. Nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock Central. It's going to be big. 7 o'clock clock tonight. Tell your friends and family, tune in. Become PrisonPlanet.tv members. Thank you all for your support. All right, that's it for this live transmission.